In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a kinetic hairy pavilion. The geometry and the shape of spikes react to the attractor point on the curve by evaluating the central curve length. Let's take a look. Okay, we're going to start creating three curves in plan first. So I'm going to use this control point curve and I'll draw three curves arbitrarily. You can freely draw any shape, it doesn't really matter. All we need is three lines set side by side. So I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to give three parameters to the curve. So I'm going to copy these three curve components and assign individually from right to left. So center point and out the curve again. Okay, let's go to perspective view. I'm going to move the center curve up that direction. So I use move component, connect the curve to geometry, and use Z unit. That goes to motion, and I'm going to define somewhere around 15. So now center curves are moved up, and I'm going to give it up a little bit. So 21 looks okay. And so next is that we'll have to create rips uh, based on points on the curves. So which means that we'll have to divide the curves equally. So we'll divide this curve three times. So using divide component. So I'm going to move these, move these curves next to this move, moved curve. And use that curve goes there and this curve there I copy again paste this curve goes to the last curve so I'm going to connect these three curves using arc three point so basically this needs a three points and you know this they already got the individual curve so this is curve a point one curve a point b likewise curve curve b point a two a uh, curve b point one two three likewise on the last one so we we'll have to connect that to a point b point c you see the ribs being created and you can define the number of number of ribs by giving the parameter so i'm going to type 20 to count that has to go there and this number has to be consistent and 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 that allows that allows to give always give promise three points to this component okay so you can increase it so i'm going to leave this on 29 okay and next is we're going to place hair on this curve so to do so we're going to use perpendicular frame so if you've seen the previous tutorial you know what this component does so this component allows you to place a frames on each curves and that will give you the chance that you can place any shape along the curve or you can also uh, retract some information from this you know, frames which is a plane uh, this time we're gonna we have to create another point that goes away from this rip which is the um, which is x reverse direction so if you look at the uh, the frame that sits here you know so we know the red uh, line indicates x-axis and green indicates y-axis so that has to go away so which is x reverse so let's type deconstruct plane that will give you the origin point of x y z axis so we're interested in uh, getting the information of x reverse so i'm going to type reverse and gonna move that point so using that connects to motion and origin point. So you, you see the point has been created that goes away from the center point. Uh, if you wanna if you wanna scale that you know vector you can always use multiplication and connect that there and you just type any number there that is greater than one and result go result goes to motion 
and you can see that the dots are further away from the previous points. Uh, so this is rather a bit predictable, even though you can control other thing using the parameters that we defined here, which is you know the height of the uh, height of the pavilion, as well as the uh, the density of the ribs. So this time we're going to give more spice to how this, you know, the distance responds to the, 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 the length, you know, the location of, of this curve. And also that, that we can create a point that move, moves along this curve by using the component called evaluate curve. So let's, let's start from there. I'm going to turn off this perpendicular frame now and type evaluate so evaluate curve or maybe even length so maybe the length is a lot easier to to find the point on the uh, point find, uh, find the dot on the on the curve and since if it's normalized if normalized says true which means that the only thing that we need to know we don't need to even calculate the distance but the length of the curve we just need to know that it starts from 0 to 1. So type curve. So connect curve to the center point. And you know the, the length has already been predefined between 0 to 1. So this time I'm going to give one decimal point. And that goes to length. So if you slide it up, you see the point is moving all the way up. So if, when it gets to one, it, it comes to the end point. If it goes all the way down, down to zero, it, it goes back to the starting point. Uh, you can even increase the um, increase the the, the dec uh, decimal you know number all the way up to three. That gives you more defined you know the smooth transition or sort of smooth you know the resolution. But all we need now is probably 10, 10 steps. So now we got the uh, the curve on the point. So now we're going to calculate the distance between this base point of the hair. So we know the base point of the hair is the origin, and we know where the dot is on the curve. So so point A goes to origin. Point B goes to the point eval uh, that has been evaluated on the curve. So that the distance is being calculated now. So we're going to use the graph mapper. To give graph mapper, just to give a profile on the uh, uh, random profile on the on the on the rip. So we'll have to remap this so using bound to grab the max and minimum number. We'll have to use the remap, and and we'll, we're going to remap the figure that comes out from the distance, the distance goes to your value, we know it's been, it's, it's been grabbed that minimum maximum of individual set of data. If you, if you create a panel, if you connect that there, you, you'll see that you know, the maximum and minimum domain has been defined like that. So you'll have to graph this, not flatten, so you'll have to grab this. So each, you know, each set means the uh, each rib has got the different minimum and maximum uh, distance number. So that goes to source. And now we have to choose the type of graph. So this time I'm going to use the Perlin and I'm going to redefine. So by double click the left top corner, you can always choose the uh, magnitude or the scale of this. Uh, graph, so I'm going to give 30, so make it a bit more dramatic, and the minimum is 5. Uh, so we know the x is always between 0 to 1, and the, the y, the outcome, will be between 5 and 30. It, is re it, it will be remapped between 5 to 30. And let's go, that map goes to that point, and this will substitute b in multiplication. Delete that. Let's turn off the point, end point. And I'm going to use line. So 
so we know starting point is origin and the end point is that loop. so you see that things now a bit more dramatically you know goes up and down and let's increase that depth and maybe play that mode that looks very organic now okay let's increase the density here because that will give that will give very nice um, pavilion and I'm going to move the center curve slightly up okay that's interesting okay let's pipe these spikes so type pipe define the radius so 1.2 and connect that to curve right, let's increase that 0.3 and let's pipe the arc hold down shift and connect to arc and let's increase the um, let's increase this hair number of hairs as well so you know you will have to go per frame so so now it's been defined as 10 we're going to increase that to 20 and it goes to that. There you go, or maybe more. So 50. Okay, well that looks better, much better. Okay, so we now have created the pavilion, hairy pavilion, that is response to the point on the point on the spine. So we can move that just to check whether that response hey that comes success okay so this is it uh thanks for watching you can bake it and render it uh in your rhino uh probably run a separate session how to render things in rhino uh but later time okay thanks for watching see you next time